Okay guys, welcome back to another Celtic tutorial. Um, today we're going to draw this. Um, this is a corner, uh, like a Celtic knotwork corner you can use for borders for drawings or on your DIY projects and stuff like that. Now in my previous video we did this and all this is is this without these spaces or breaks that are in here. So in the previous video, and if you haven't seen that, I'm going to put a link down in, um, I'll, I'll link it in the, or try and pin it in the comments. But it's basically a three by three grid stacked on top and next to each other. And it kind of, this is what we worked on in that video. So you can see it a little bit better. One, two, three, one, two, three stacked on top of one, two, three, one, two, three, and next to one, two, three, one, two, three. So these, this is a three by three grid. This is a three by three grid. This is a three by three grid. And you can see that a little bit better here. This is what I started with, with the, the dots. And then this is the diagonal grid that we worked on in the last video, which I'll explain again in this video. We created a diagonal grid within the grid. So we have one three by three grid, another three by three grid, another three by three grid. We combine them together to make a pattern for a corner. And then we put in a diagonal grid to link it all together. Okay, so in the interest of trying to keep this a little bit shorter than my last video, which was almost an hour, uh, I decided that I was going to get the grid started, or at least part of the grid anyway, started ahead of time. So basically we just, we take those three by three grids, we put dots on every intersection in the three by three grid. And then that forms smaller boxes within the grid where we're gonna put a blue or a different color dot. So you're gonna use two different colors for this one. A different color dot in the center, okay? And that will help us get our diagonal grid set up. Now for the last video, I had no breaks. So the only breaks were the, the exterior lines that you can't go through, right? But for this particular design, I put in four break lines. One here on the top grid. In this corner grid, I did a break line here and then mirrored it here. That's kind of important for this design. And then for this third uh, three by three grid, I put a break here that mirrors, flips and mirrors this one so we have a symmetrical design, okay? Um, I can get into breaks and grids um, in future tut tutorials or on um, if I decide to create a Patreon page, I might um, do that because they can get a little complicated. And this video is strictly about how to create a, an, an interesting corner border for um, you know, a, a Celtic, uh, piece of Celtic artwork or something like that. So I don't want to get too deep into grids because that's like a rabbit hole that you can go down for hours and hours, but we can, we'll break that down in the future videos. All right, so let's get started. We have our three by three grids. We have our break lines. The only thing that's missing to get us started are our diagonal lines. Now, as I said in my last video, diagonal lines are going to be drawn in, in between 
these diagonal rows of dots. You're not drawing a line touching any of those dots. You're going in between in the middle and sort of diagonal every box all the way up to you hit an edge of the grid. Okay? And for now, we're not going to worry about these breaks. We're going to draw on through them. Okay, and we're just going to keep on going. Am I good? No. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to eyeball it. I'm going to stop this for a minute because I have somebody that's walking around upstairs. I'll be back in one minute. Okay. I am sorry, I have like five people in this house and trying to find a time to do a video where there's nobody walking around making noise is impossible. I have grown kids that live here now and um, unfortunately they cannot afford to live on their own. And I am not going to even comment about that right now. But let's just keep going. touched on this in the last video this these diagonal lines that we're doing they represent a grid within a grid and this is to show you a different technique than I had been showing in some of my earlier videos and I'll get into that when we get a little deeper into this. If you're OCD, you could certainly use a ruler for this, but you don't need to because, quite honestly, this, these lines are going to be erased. And again, like I say in other videos, um, when you're doing these grid lines, any of this, the dots, the lines, to help lay, lay this out, do it lightly so that you can erase it because they are going to be erased, they're just guidelines. All of this is just to help you lay out more intricate details. And they can either be incorporated into your design or you can erase them. So these dark break lines that I, that I made, they're only dark because I need you to see them. When you draw them, you're going to do it lightly. Same thing with the dots. You're going to draw them lightly so that you can see them. I'm trying not to be in frame. Because I don't think you want to see my arm. A few of my earlier videos, and I really apologize for this, but a few of my earlier videos, I have, I'm off the camera, I got my arms in frame, and you're watching my hand for 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, I apologize. I'm, you know, we're all amateur videographers, right? I'm learning as I go. All right, and let me know about this setup, too. Um, I tr I'm trying to get a, get better lighting. I've had comments about the lighting. All right, now we have our diagonal grid and we are ready to get started. All right, so in previous techniques, we set up grids, we set up our weaves like this. Right now, in this grid, in this technique, we're going to do something that's more traditional. This is good for simple stuff and you know, simple borders and stuff. But when you get into complicated stuff, like I said in my last video, you need to understand how to use grids and, uh, and a more traditional technique. 
All right, we're gonna start in a corner. We're gonna start in this corner and we're gonna follow this line diagonally till it can't go any further. It cannot cross this line, it has to turn. It's gonna go to the next diagonal, it cannot cross this line. It's gonna turn. I'm gonna turn this off for another moment, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Let's try this again. All right, we're gonna start here. We're gonna follow this till we can't go any further. And then it's gonna turn. It's gonna go diagonal. You can't go past this border. So you're gonna turn. You're gonna go to the diagonal till you see this break line here. Okay? This break line means you can't cross it, so the line can't be crossed. So what do we do? We turn, and we have to follow that diagonal till we can't go any further again. It's going to get to that break line. We can't cross it, so it's going to turn, and we're going to follow up to the edge the border edge, and we're going to turn, turn, we're going to follow that diagonal down to this edge, turn, follow the diagonal to this break line, turn, follow the diagonal to the edge, turn, follow the diagonal to the edge, turn, Follow the diagonal to the break line, turn, turn, and now we are back where we started from. Now if you want to at this point, because this is going to be I think three different lines that are going to um, close loops that are going to link together. If it helps you visualize it, you might want to do in um, three different colors or three different shades of pencil or something like that, okay? But this is the first one, okay? And that's, you can already see how it's setting up. So let's do the other corner. Let's see where the other corner goes. I'm going to do the same way we just did this one. This line is going to go diagonal till it hits a break line and it's going to turn because you can't cross the break line. Break line's there to create uh, negative space. You're going to go to the edge of the border, turn, go down to the other edge of the border and turn. You're going to go in the di diagonal till you hit this break line and turn. Go to the corner. Turn. Now we're going to follow this diagonal to this side of the border. Turn. Go to the corner. So we're just following the diagonal lines till we hit either a border or a break line. Okay, there's the second line. And that's a, uh, where is it? Okay, we have our second line which is basically this shape here that helps us. It's going to eventually give our corner some shape here. All right. So all we have left to do is this, this third line. So we get to the edge. We're going to turn. We're going to hit this diagonal. We're going to turn at the edge. Head down this diagonal. We get to the break line, we're going to turn, 
go the diagonal to the next brick line, then we're going to turn, go up to the border, turn, this border, turn, turn. We're going to follow this diagonal wherever it goes. Where does it go? It goes all the way up here. We hit that border. We're going to turn and we are back where we started. Okay? Now, once we do that, it's time to do... Um, the, these, these lines here are the spine, so now we're going to have to draw the, the edges of the thread, right? So that's going to require... drawing lines on either side. So what I'm going to do for this one, the last one I, I did, I did um, the overs and unders as I drew this. I think for this one, I'm going to just outline it first, and then we'll go back and worry about overs and unders. Just so I can show you different ways to do it. It'll help you do... It'll help you learn how to visualize in different ways so you can decide for yourself how you're more comfortable. Because this stuff can play with your eyes. It can really play with your eyes. You don't have to worry about being too particularly neat here, but what you are trying to do is kind of delineating the width of your line at this point. So try and keep it fairly consistent. You are going to go back and draw over these lines and um, make them pretty. <laughs> but I'm just drawing lines, but I'm not drawing through any of the intersections at this point. I'm just uh, avoiding drawing anything over the intersections. And that will help out when we start doing our overs and unders. And I did touch on this technique when I did the, uh, around, the round circular borders. I think I touched on this a little bit on one or two videos of that. All right, so we got the central line. We got our um, thread now. So let's start in this corner and do the thread. Start creating a thread for this. Let's go this way. We'll follow the line this way. Um, so like I said with um, In my last video, I had mentioned that I might create a Patreon page. And the reason why is there's there's a lot of complicated stuff that goes into some of this artwork. It might take longer videos, possibly, to make. And, you know, that's obviously takes me more time to do research and... and work on designs and things like that. So I may decide to create a Patreon page with a $5, a single $5 tier where we get to um, kind of see videos and talk about more complicated stuff. Um, that idea is still in the works. So let me know what you think of something like that, whether or not that'd be something you'd be interested in. All right, line two is done, or thread two is done. Now we're gonna work on the third thread. And again, I'm drawing this a little bit darker. When you do this, even at this stage, you're still going to be drawing these things lighter because you're gonna draw over it, you're going to 
give it style, you're going to fix things, you know, you're going to perfect your, your lines. This, for me, is not a work of art, so I'm not taking my time particularly. Um, if you were doing a work of art, or doing a piece for somebody, you are certainly going to take your time. You're going to make the, this a little neater. Because, yes, the, the neater you make, th make things at this stage, the easier it's going to be for you to perfect the details in your final design, obviously. But since this is not a work of art for me, and I'm trying not to keep this video too long, I'm just kind of flying through it just to give you an idea of what you can do. So it's not the neatest thing in the world. <laughs> if I was doing one of my wood burned pieces, um, yeah, this would definitely be a lot neater. And a lot lighter because, like I said, you have to be able to erase this stuff. And believe it or not, we are almost done with this. Most of the process, and, and, until you get to the point where you're doing detail work and you know little fine details and things like that, but most of the, the work to set it up is, is done in the planning stage. Okay. Uh, we are now going to do our overs and unders. We have all three of our threads. So we're going to go in and we are going to do our overs and unders. Normally I would go back at this point and I would erase the spine. But you know what, I think I'm going to include the spine in my final design. So maybe I'll just leave that. Eh, you know, I'll, I'll leave it. Um... Uh, all right, let's get back to this. I'm going to start here. Doesn't matter where you start, but wherever you start. Real important. Wherever you start, you stay with that. You follow that all the way around. Don't jump around because it will. you will not have your overs and unders done properly. If you start at this point, you're going to follow this thread. So we are doing an over here. If this is over, this has to be under. We're going to go intersection by intersection. Okay. Hopefully you can see that. If this went over, and this went under, it's going to go over this thread. And the overs and unders are going to drive you crazy because you're just going to have to keep saying it over and over. you got to pay attention to what you're doing because it's so easy to make a mistake. Your, wine has, your, your mind has to wander just for a few seconds and you come back and you're steady going around and you get to the end and you're like, Oh, I screwed up. <laughs> and then you have to start all over again. So pay attention to what you're doing. This, is, this line here, the, or this thread here, went over, under, over. It's going to go under this. All right. It's going under. Now it's going to go over. It went over, now it's going to go under. All right, it went under, it's going to go over. Over, under. Under, over. Over, under. Under, 
over. And it's going to go under. And it's going to go over. Under. Over. Where am I? <laughs> oh, I can drive you nuts. And make sure you don't, you follow in the same thread all the way around. All right. So we have over. We're under. We're going to go over. Under. Fingers crossed we did this right. This should be an under, and it is. So we did this right because it goes over on the next one. So we're back where we started. We did good. All right. Now we did that one. We're going to do... And you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and outline that just so you can kind of see. Probably should have done this as I was doing the next, doing the overs and unders, but okay. We'll go with it. I just want to do it this way to kind of so that you can kind of see it come alive. This is where the magic starts to happen. Again, I'm going quick because this is just demonstration, but, you know, you're going to want to take your time and whoopsie. Okay, well, that was just a little too, too, that's just a no, 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 sloppy. All right. Okay, so you can see it better now. And I'll, I'll do that do that um, going forward so you could see a little bit better. I should have done that as we were going. And let's get some of this debris off of here with my handy dandy brush. It's a horse hair brush. Um, I'll probably leave links to, um, I am a Blick affiliate, so I will probably leave links to um, some of the supplies that I tend to use. Um, I'll leave some Blick, uh, Blick links for you. Uh, I might pin them down in the comments. All right, now 
Let's start with what we know. Okay, since we have one that's already done, we know it works. Start with what you know. Now, we already have this established that this thread is going over this thread. So let's do this thread. Okay, so I want to go this way. You go any way you want, but I'm just going to go this way. This thread went under this, so it's going to go over the next one. Then it's going to go under. And for now, we're just going to do that. We're just going to do that. Then it's going to go over, which is already established. We just have to draw it. And just clean up the lines a little so that they meet. So when you're doing your threads, your final, in your final rendition, you want to make sure that your threads touch the lines so that they actually look like threads and not just some disconnected pieces of something. All right, so when over, it's going to go under this one. I'm just going to draw that connecting piece. It'll go over the next one. It's going to go under this one. It'll go over the next one. It's gonna go, yeah, there we go. It's gonna go under this one. It'll go over this one. Under this one and over this one. Over, it's going to go under. And it's going to go over. We already see this is done. So we're just going to draw it out. All right, it's going under, and it's going to go over this. Oh my god, how sloppy can we get? Good thing this is not a piece of artwork. Okay, we went under. And we're going to go over the next junction, which we already started. And then it's going to go under this junction here. So we'll follow this through. All right. It went under, 
it's going to go over. So it's going under this one and it's going over that one. So we see the next couple of junctions are, are perfect. Let's clean this up a little. And also when you're doing your works of art, make sure that your line, if it's on one side, Try and make sure you line it up on the other side so that it, doesn't, it looks like it's the same line. All right, so we went over, under. See, we're trying to line it up. And this is already done and we're back where we started. So it'll be over and under and we know we did it right. Clean this up so that that looks a little nicer. So that's two, two lines we have done already. Two threads we have done already. We're gonna do the final thread and then we can clean it up a little bit. All right, start with where you know. This is already done, this junction. So we already know this thread is going over this and it'll go under that. So we're just gonna draw this out. And at this point, most of this pattern is already there for us. We just have to go in and draw it out. Okay, that's under and over and under, over, under, over, under, and this one will be over. The next one will be over. And it'll be under this one. Getting some wonky lines. I gotta reel that in a little bit. All right, under. It's gonna go over this line. And then it's going to go under this line and over the next intersection. Tighten that up a little. Under. Over. Under over, under, so we know that next section is good. All right, we're going under, that means over and under, so that section's good. So you're double checking as you go. Under, over, under that section's good. All right, under 
And it's going to go over and under. Let's line that up a little more. Under, over. And we are back where we started at under. So we did. We did it. All that's left now is to erase whatever you don't want. So we'll erase these break lines. I'll try and erase this. Let me see if I can get these. I drew them kind of dark, so unfortunately, it's hard to erase when they're dark. That's why I said when you do it, or if you're doing a final piece, you're going to do any guidelines really light. As light as you can stand it, because you're going to erase a lot of stuff. All right, let's see. Let's clean that up. Clean that up. All right, so the only thing left now is to style it. Let's some of that. I like using blendy stumps because I draw in pencil a lot. And just kind of Now you can, at this point, you can do whatever you want with this. You can leave it light, give it some texture if you want. Um, you can put it on a dark background if that's what you want. For these purposes, I'm just going to give it a little bit of shading and depth just to kind of show you a little bit of a finish. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I just kind of want to show you a little bit of how to. So this one, hopefully you aren't too confused with this. Um, again, this was not about how to show you how to do breaks that that'll be in a future video this video is just how to show you how to do a corner knot with a slightly different um, style than uh, just a basic interwoven thread right um, this ha gives you some uh, some idea that uh, of how to create patterns within patterns. Um, and that's basically what grid work is about. It's just creating the patterns within the patterns. But uh, I did have somebody that did ask me a couple months back about how to create corners, or how to handle corners. Now this, you can, certainly be very creative and artistic with your corners and you can treat this corner here as something entirely different on its own. P put a piece of artwork there that sort of overlaps the border or stands alone uh, or, be or becomes intertwined. You know, you see all kinds of complicated um, Celtic work did not work. Um, if you've never seen illuminated manuscripts, you really should. I'm going to write a blog and I'm going to put a few links. Um, when I have the blog done, I'll update and put it down in the comments probably. But uh, if you've never seen what an illuminated manuscript looks like from like England, Ireland, and Scotland. Um, you should take, take a moment and Google illuminated manuscripts. The work is astonishing and the level of detail is astonishing. But they basically, we think, 
use this method and took it to, you know, whole new levels that we can't even imagine. They, they probably went, used these grids and then did grids within grids. Because if you look at these grids, um, you, you start to realize that each one of these grids can be broken down into a grid, a smaller grid, and then an even smaller grid, right? And that's how they do the really complicated kind of stuff. Uh, I've been researching how to do um, the pattern, pattern work and, and key work designs. And the, it's called step work, step and key designs and oh my, it opened a whole new world to me. <laughs> so I am going to be doing some research into that for sure. because I'm fascinated by it. The whole idea really is, is to create patterns, is to train your eye to see patterns and then get creative with what you have. I mean, that's, that's basically what it is. It's just seeing patterns and creating patterns. And that's why our eyes love the artwork so much because it does create patterns and we look for patterns and things. All right, so I think I'm going to uh, stop here with this. You kind of get the idea. Um, something like this might stand out really nicely if you put, made it, kept it light and then put it on a dark background. You might be able to see this, all this negative space a little, not, a little bit better. The pattern of the threads might stand out a little bit more. But that all depends on your, your tastes and your final design. But, um, yeah, so here's the difference between this one that has breaks here. And this one that has no breaks. Okay, so we have with breaks without breaks. And it's the same, we started the same exact way. The only difference is that I worked out where to put my breaks to create a little bit of a different design. Okay, so hopefully um, you enjoyed that. Hopefully you learned a little something from it. Um, again, if you like it, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, I don't put out videos constantly because I, I have other stuff going on and I don't have the time but I'm trying to put out a couple of videos a month. Um, I have some uh, ideas about uh, patterns. I have a Celtic cross that I'm going to be working on as a wood burn piece so the next thing that I'm going to be working on are patterns and I'll probably take you through that process as I create different patterns to kind of see what I would like to put on my uh, finished Celtic cross. So that you can look forward to um, some more videos to come on, on that kind of stuff. And in the meantime, um, practice your drawing. Uh, let me know what you thought in the comments if there's any points you're not too sure of um, just let me know I'm pretty good at answering comments um, and again like and subscribe that, that helps me grow I'm trying to grow this channel I'm trying to get up to it my goal was to get to a thousand in the next couple of months that would be awesome um, but small things I gotta get to 500 first all right so um, if you want to know what you can use this for. Um, this is not just for drawing or wood, or, uh, wood burning. You can take these and you can stencil them onto your uh, picture frames, mirror frames, trays, things like that, bowls, whatever, jewelry boxes. 
and you can paint them on, you know, that kind of stuff. So you don't have to just be a, somebody who draws to appreciate Celtic art. All right, so let me stop rambling. Let me get off here. And um, until the next video, have a um, safe and happy day. And I'm out. See you later.